Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be going over how you can add different types of items into EZO manually. So from the dashboard we have the option to quick add items from the plus icon over here. We can also choose to go to the items men menu and click on assets. So as we've discussed, assets are serialized um, items which are being tracked individually. So an asset only has a quantity of one and it's considered unique. So we're going to add assets manually over here. So we're simply going to click on add assets. So let's make an asset and call it a power drill. So assets can have a product model number, which is basically the model number of the item. So for example, if you have multiple assets of the same name, and um, they're also the same model of an item, you can assign them product model number. We have the group. We'll talk more in more detail about groups in a separate video, but groups are basically categories of items. As you can see over here, we've defined different groups in our system. We have the asset identification number. The asset identification number is the serial number or the barcode number of the item. You can also scan it in from over here and it'll autofill it, or you can type it manually. We have the description, and all of these other fields that you're seeing here, these are custom fields, which are basically additional attributes. These don't already exist in the system. We've actually created them by clicking on, click here to add custom fields. We're going to be going in depth about the different types of custom fields in a separate video. And then we have the extended information section. In this section, we have information like the cost price of the item, which is how much did you buy the item for, the vendor, that is who did you procure this item from, and the location of the item, that is where is the item right now, and the purchased on date. The purchased on date is really important because if you're tracking depreciation against your items, you need to have a purchased on date since that's how the system is going to count depreciation against it. So we've created our item and currently it's in the available state because all newly created items will be created as available. We, we can see all of the details on the items that we filled in. We can always edit to add or remove the details. And we can also clone the item if you want to make another item with the exact same information, but a different asset identification number. So that's that. If you want to add more assets from here, there's an add asset button on the top right that you can click on and quickly add another asset. So this was how we can create assets. Now let's talk about bulk items like asset stock and inventory. So you can add, again, we can go to the listing page for asset stock and over here you see a list of items and quantities associated with that item as well as the available quantity of that item. So let's add an asset stock item to see how this is functioning. So let's call this asset stock box of wires and assign it a product model number, an AIN. Again, these are custom fields. We, these, these are custom attributes that we added ourselves into the system. And then we have the option for extended information. Price for ad stock is the cost of adding each individual item. So what is the cost per unit of the item while you're adding it? Initial stock quantity is how much quantity are you adding as a base quantity right now? So let's say we are starting off with a quantity of 100. Reorder quantity is when you're adding this as a stock to a purchase order, what is the standard default quantity that you should order in your purchase order? We have the vendor location. This location is simply the default location of the item. That is where does this item originate from? And then we have the low stock threshold. The low stock threshold is basically um, Beyond which quantity are you going to send an alert that this item across all of its location is cumulatively less than this quantity, which means we need to order more items potentially, or it's a cause of concern that we have less items overall across all our locations. Then we have location specific thresholds. Now, how is a location specific threshold different from a low stock threshold? A low stock threshold counts the total quantity of the item across all of its locations. Whereas a location threshold is the threshold that's set for a particular location. Um, so let's, let's discuss the default location thresholds. So for the default is going to be the location threshold applied to all of the locations the asset stock is present at unless specified otherwise. 
So let's add location stock over here. The low location threshold can be five and the excess location threshold, which means that you have too much stock at a particular location can be around 150. Now let's add a location specific threshold. Let's say we have a smaller warehouse at Heathrow and we want the low stock threshold to be 10, but the excess location threshold to be 100. So now it's going to consider Heathrow differently from all the other locations because we have specified a location specific threshold for Heathrow. So anyways, let's go and create our asset stock. So we've created our asset stock item and we see all the details that we filled out for our item. Over here, we see that room one has already has a quantity of 100 and it falls perfectly within the low and excess threshold. So its status is considered optimal. So we're all good there. Um, inventory is created in the same way. The only difference between asset stock and inventory is simply that when you check out inventory or you loan out inventory, it is automatically consumed, whereas asset stock can be returned. So the creation details are basically the same. So that's all on how you can create items direct manually through EasyOffice. Thank you.